Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I'm out at my granny camp, which is my remote Alaska off-grid cabin, and I'm working on a new project today. I recently went to the grocery store and was able to get some free five-gallon buckets. If you go into the grocery store, go to the bakery department and ask them if they have empty buckets and most of the time they will let you have them for free. I'm going to use one of the buckets I got the other day as a remote survival cache so it needs to have the gear and equipment I would need for say a bug out bag or a 72 hour kit. We don't know what the future holds but we do know that there might be reasons that you might have to evacuate, you might have to leave your home, maybe there's or storms, forest fires, earthquakes, tornadoes, civil unrest, there's all kinds of things that could happen that you can't get to your home or your home is no longer safe. And so having some emergency supplies put in remote locations can be a good idea. I always say that prepping is lifestyle insurance because I'm preparing for emergencies that happen to everyone sometime in your life. And then if you have the things that you need stockpiled in places that you can get to, you can continue to live a, as close to normal a life as possible during an emergency and that allows you to spend your time and energy figuring out what to do next. If you don't have any supplies and you're just standing there with your empty hands and nothing in them, nothing to do, no gear of any kind, you have to start figuring out how to get something to eat. I need a drink of water. Where am I going to sleep? What am I going to do? If you have supplies put around in your home, in your car, some uh, supplies at the, your place of employment, and maybe even in a remote location, and those can help smooth the way for whatever comes your way. If you want to use a five gallon bucket for a survival storage cache, the first thing you need to do is make sure that it has the proper rubber gasket in the lid. Not all of the lids come with the extra rubber gasket and that's what makes it uh, waterproof and airtight. So other buckets might be okay if your lid doesn't have it. Those buckets might be okay to use for other storage purposes. But anytime you want to store important gear or food, always make sure that you have that rubber gasket to keep your things safe and dry. What are the important additions to a storage survival cache? The same categories you would want in any kind of an emergency. You need some water. You need food. You need first aid supplies. You need hygiene supplies. You need tools. You need a way to start a fire. You may need a way to prepare the foods that you have and you need something to use as a shelter. It's surprising the amount of things you can fit in a five gallon bucket, but of course you're not going to be able to fit something like a whole sleeping bag or a tent. So you need to think on small size. What can I fit? How can I get this smaller? How can I make these items work for more than one purpose so that I can downsize and make my storage survival bucket complete while having all the things that I absolutely need. Let me take all the things out and show you what I've included in my storage survival cache. The most important prepping item you should always include is water. I have two water bottles that I, they're plastic, they're heavy duty. I filled them up myself because I can leave an air space at the top. So even if I put this outside and it freezes, the water is going to expand, but the bottle is going to hold together and there's room inside the bottle for all of the water. I have two of those and they go in first. Next I have some freeze dried meals. These are going into the bucket and it doesn't matter if I leave this outside and it freezes, these aren't going to be hurt. Then when I want to prepare these, I have the water that's required to make a meal out of these. If I don't have the opportunity to heat any water, I have a big bag of granola and some dried fruit. These foods can be left out. It doesn't matter if they get frozen. They're still going to be safe to eat. Next, I want a way to heat up the water or boil more water if I had access to more. So I have a can of Fancy Heat from the Dollar Tree. 
This is a can like Sterno. It's like an alcohol based fuel. It has a tight lid on it. You open the lid, you light the wick, and then you can actually put it out, put the lid back on and save it to use again. And these cook for, oh, two hours. You can heat things for two hours over these. I didn't put a stove in here with it because I figure I can always put a couple of rocks around it to hold something over the top of it. I have a metal cup that I could put over this to heat up some water, a fork, and a spoon. I'm also going to put this all the way in the bottom so it doesn't get knocked or spilled. Next I have a first aid kit. I got this little glasses case at the Dollar Tree. I filled it up with first aid gear myself. One of the benefits of filling up your own first aid kit is you know the components that are in there when you buy one that's ready made. You may not actually be aware of what's in there and if you need to do some first aid you may find out you don't have the things that you thought might be included but were not. So that's a good reason to make this up yourself. It has things like band-aids, gauze, alcohol prep pads, cotton rounds, there's some antibiotic cream, some hand sanitizer, and nobody knows what time of year it'll be. I have some mosquito wipes. I have some off mosquito repellent wipes. These little cases are nice. They even have a clip on them. You could clip them onto your belt loop or a zipper pull on your jacket. Next I have a big bag of mixed up small items that I don't want to get lost in the bottom of the bucket. I'll take these things out and sort them out so you can see the small items that are going into my kit. The first category is fire starting. I have some Instafire. This stuff will work in all kinds of weather. I have a smaller pouch with more fire starting gear. Your candles, waterproof matches, a lighter, cotton balls, a chapstick, you can rub that on the cotton balls just like you would Vaseline, and a piece of foil. It's a good idea when you're starting a fire to put a piece of aluminum foil underneath it. So if you're using something like petroleum jelly, when it melts it won't run into the ground. It'll pool on the foil and then you'll still be able to use that fuel fully and keep your fire going. I have a flashlight with extra batteries. I have some glow sticks and if you're putting together a survival cache, make sure you get high quality glow sticks. This isn't a time when you want to buy toys at the Dollar Tree, six for a dollar. You want to get a high quality glow stick so that it's going to actually be able to work and work well for extended periods of time. For tools, I have a multi-tool, a pocket knife, and some duct tape. Then I have a few hygiene items. I have a toothbrush with some little toothpaste. I have a hairbrush, a pair of reading glasses. I have some wet wipes and some Kleenex. Next is the area of shelter. I have an emergency survival blanket. I have a life bivy from Go Time Gear and this is an emergency sleeping bag. It's made out of very heavy duty material. It opens up to be seven feet tall and it's 36 inches across and it's going to fit just about any size person. They're sturdy and strong and you can even fold them up and reuse them. It doesn't take the place of a sleeping bag if you're going camping, but it would certainly be an emergency sleeping bag that would work well if you didn't have a sleeping bag. I also have a life tent from Go Time Gear. The life tent is like a big tube tent. It's made out of the same heavy-duty fabric as the bivy bag, but it's much larger. It also includes a long piece of paracord so that you can string it up between two trees. The life tent holds more than one person, and in a very inclement weather, you can climb into your bivy bag and then into your life tent. It's going to give you an extra layer of protection from very inclement weather. Both the Life Bivy and the Life Tent come with a drawstring, a paracord, and there's an emergency whistle on the handle. Hand warmers are a must-have in a very cold environment. There's a lot of uses that you can do with hand warmers besides just warm your hands. If your shoes or your boots get wet, you can put these in them overnight, and the warmth from them can help dry it out. In a very cold environment, you can nestle the hand warmer inside your sleeping bag to help keep you warm. I made a video about all the different kind of uses for hand warmers. I'll put a link to that video if that's something you're interested in.
all the small gear goes back into the gallon size Ziploc bag and gets nestled into my storage survival cash bucket. Next you need a few items of clothing to keep warm. I don't have enough room in here for a jacket, but I have a bandana, a pair of gloves, these can be work gloves or just for warmth, and a heavy duty pair of socks. Don't put cotton socks. If they get wet then they never get dry and they wick the uh, temperature and the warmth away from your body. Use something like wool socks for your emergency gear. I put a little microfiber towel in there. It can be used for a lot of different purposes. And then I have a drawstring backpack from the Dollar Tree. It even has an additional pocket with a zipper on the outside for separating your gear. Then if for some reason I needed to keep moving, I could load the gear in here because a bucket is just too cumbersome to carry with you. I could use this to carry the things that I want or if I was going to make a camp there I could even use this to go out and collect firewood or something. Having a sturdy bag that has the ability to work as a backpack could be very handy in a lot of situations. The last item I put in my storage survival cache is cash. I put some cash and a copy of my identification. Depending on where you are or what the circumstances or what the emergency, cash may be exactly what you need. It can help you pay for a hotel room. It can help you get food if there are still stores that are open. It can help you uh, hire a ride to get to another location. There are so many things you can do in an emergency if you have some cash on hand. Consider where you're going to put this and then you might decide if that's something that you would like to do too. Leave me a comment on what items you'd like to include in your prepper storage survival cache. Learn more at alaskagranny.com. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.